You're listening to UnitedWeStrike.com Radio on the International Community Radio Network. Well, good afternoon, evening, early morning, or wee hours of the night, depending on what part of the world you're listening to us. My name is Gary Hendershot, and I am pushing all the buttons here in my secret underground facility just a little south of Washington, D.C., trying to stay out of harm's way. Uh, we had an interesting presentation from uh, Dean Lloyd and Am Rosen. Hope you all enjoyed that. But now we're moving down south to Texas. We're going to bring in our friend Lark in Texas, just an American. And uh, Lark, by George, I do believe I hit the right buttons. You should be live now. Oh, my. We can't have that. Uh, well, we can't yeah. have this. <laughs> Considering the alternative, I would say being live is probably not such a bad thing. Well, I am indeed alive. I uh, live in my little master plan community here in Texas. Uh, some of you may be familiar with me by now, and I'm sorry for that, if that's the case. Uh, you can find my research notes at a website entitled Just an American, larkintexas.blogspot.com. I'm that fellow that talks quite a bit about communitarianism. Not much of a word I like. Same with that word, community. And I like to say that when I'm at a loss for words, I can easily simply parrot the words of others. I'm quite adept at that. Perhaps yourself. Now, I want to give a shout out to uh, a few people. Uh, of course, everyone here at United We Strike. Don't buy. Don't comply. Ask why. And this is our last episode of the year 2013. This wonderful monthly event known as United We Strike. I first wanted to give a shout out to Clint Richardson of the Corporation Nation for having... Uh, Nick Rapana and I, on his broadcast in the last uh, week or so. Also to Alan and Steve at Open Your Mind Radio. And as well, Suzanne Pozel of Occupy Corporatism for having suffered an appearance by myself just recently on their own radio programs. I applaud these people or at least keeping this word, communitarianism, in our minds. Top of mind, shall we say. Now, today I'm going to essentially just parrot some of my favorite quotations. I don't know that I have anything important to impart to you. I recommend, though, that if you have an interest in this word, communitarianism, and how it is being used to play you in a kind of mimetic warfare in a way that it's trying to enslave you. I invite you to again visit my website and start with an entry, The Sum of All Things. A five-part series. Start with Entry number one, the sum of all things. Remember, the sum of all things is the truth. But here are a few quotes, kind of a greatest hits, a compilation, if you will, of the, of the year that is 2013. Our age has seen priests of the mind teaching that gregarious is the praiseworthy form of thought. And that independent thought is contemptible. It is moreover certain that the group which desires to be strong has no use for a man who claims to think for himself. This by Julian Benda in The Treason of the Intellectuals, 1927. And I 
penned one myself just yesterday. I had that word master plan community in mind. And I write, master plan communities are just that. Every jot and tittle has been scrutinized, cross-checked, all I's dotted and T's crossed by university trained and thoroughly brainwashed communitarians of every kind and stripe. Each of them has all the appearance of an industrious monkey or a hamster, schooled in the time-tested arts of precision movement and wrote response to stimuli. These are the parasites, the new communitarians, the zombies and criminals who've given purpose to the machine which now regulates and governs your own response to stimuli. Your family members, next door neighbors, your cyber friends, you yourself perhaps. These are your enemies, your oppressors, ourselves. And remember Walt Kelly, the cartoonist who created a cartoon character named Pogo during World War II. And his admonition, we have met the enemy and he is us. So this may perhaps give you a bit of a flavor of what I'm going to delve into next. Because what I think I failed to mention on previous installments here at United We Strike since February of this year is I have a favorite philosopher. And, uh, well, not so much as a favorite philosopher, but a pet philosopher, shall we say. And his name was Diogenes. Again, at my website, you will see an entry in fact, the very first entry, entitled simply Diogenes. And here we have a quote that begins that page by Earl Shores, who wrote the book in 1996. Well, let me find it. Ah. Let me get over to Diogenes. The book was entitled A Nation of Salesmen. He wrote, It was indeed the age of information. This is the age we're in today, ladies and gentlemen. It came after the industrial age, they say. But information was not the precursor to knowledge. It was the tool of the salesman. So let's not think that information is the same as knowledge. Maybe we should look these words up. Now, I'm going to jump over to some wit and wisdom, some words from Diogenes. Now, you may remember Diogenes. He was the ancient Greek philosopher who was seen carrying a lantern in broad daylight through the streets of Athens. He was looking for an honest man. He was said to have lived in a wooden tub. And he most certainly went against quite of the convention of the day. He was the he was the enemy of philosophers like Plato and his student Aristotle. These are some words from Diogenes. The art of being a slave is to rule one's master. 
He also said, I know nothing except the fact of my ignorance. And he has the most who is content with the least. Now, Diogenes was a very playful philosopher who liked to use great wit when challenging the values and beliefs of his fellow citizens in ancient Athens. He lived in great poverty, probably begging and stealing his food, and steadfastly disdained all forms of luxury. It was because of his determination to follow his own dictates and not adhere to the conventions of society that he was given the epithet, dog, from which the name cynic is derived. Also bear in mind that word serious means dog. Here are some little antidotes. A young man contemplating marriage sought advice from Diogenes. Should I marry? Oh, marriage is too soon for a young man. Would you have me wait then until I am old? Oh no, marriage is far too late for an old man. What am I to do then? I love the girl. Love is a luxury no one can afford. It is for those who have nothing better to do. What should we be doing then? To seek freedom. It is not possible to be free if you have a wife and children. But having a wife and family is so agreeable. Then you see the problem, young man. Freedom would not be so difficult to attain were prison not so sweet. You mean to be free is to be alone? We come into the world alone and we die alone. Why in life should we be any less alone? To live then is terrible? No, not to live, but to live in chains. Now, very few of Diogenes' disciples had the physical and mental stamina to become cynics. One in particular left the circle, but not before entreating Diogenes to give him one of his books. You really are a silly fellow, said Diogenes. Surely you wouldn't have painted figs instead of real ones. And yet you pass over the genuine practice of wisdom and would be satisfied with what is merely written. Once Diogenes was asked, Tell me, to what do you attribute your great, your great poverty? Hard work, he replied. And what advice can you offer the rich? Avoid all the good things in life. Why? Because money costs too much. A rich man is far poorer than a poor man. How can that be? because poverty is the only thing money can't buy. So I will leave Diogenes for a minute. And I want to admit that I almost asked Gary to play a rebroadcast today. But I was reminded of the words of Pancho Villa, his last words. And I was reminded that this was the last United We Strike broadcast of the year 2013. And it haunted me. But these are the words that haunted me, the last words of Pancho Villa. Don't let it end like this. Tell them I said something. So that's what I do when you hear my voice. I want to say something. I don't claim to be smart enough or intelligent enough to tell you what to do, tell you what to think. I'm simply not qualified. Some other quotations. The safest road to hell is the gradual one, the gentle slope, soft underfoot, without sudden turnings, without milestones, without signposts. 
from Clive Staples Lewis in the Screw Tape Letters, 1942. And as an aside, it was Aldous Huxley and Clive Staples Lewis who famously also died on that date, November 22nd, 1963. You may recall, we commemorated recently in, here in my neck of the woods, near Dallas, Texas, the 50th anniversary of the assassination of John F. Kennedy. A murder carried out in broad daylight. Right here. So some more quotations. The Revolutionary War may be over, but the Battle of Independence has just begun. Dr. Benjamin Rush, 1782, famously a signer of the Declaration of Independence, as well as the drafting of the Constitution. In the following year, 1783, William Pitt said this, Necessity is the plea for every infringement of human freedom. It is the argument of tyrants. It is the creed of slaves. Now you remember, I mentioned that word necessity as it related to that word needful. When I explained that in the sum of all things that at some point every man has to reduce this whirling, swirling world of confusion, of words circulating in his mind and ask him herself which words are really necessary? Is a dependence necessary? Freedom? Liberty? But I said that I had reduced all of law down to one word. That word counteract. And you could do this too, very easily within that word counteract is that word contact also that word contract and I've spoken to you before about the essential elements of honorable contract how is it that we can keep things like independence of thought and mind inviolate Does freedom not go to those words free will, the exercise of freedom of choice? Well, sure it does. What about that word liberty? Locomotion. The ability to go from one point A to another point B of one's own free will, under one's own power, of one's own volition. And then I mentioned those two other words, well-beingness, or well-being, also economy. To define these words, you have to separate needs from wants. What is necessary? What is needful and what is merely desirous? With economy, we have to be able to separate those needful resources from those merely desirous. And then we must separate our actions or our activities between those which are needful, necessary, and those which are merely desirous. At the end of the day, if we want to know if we're part of the problem or the solution, 
I recommend three words. Compliant. Complacent. This spelled C-O-M-P-L-A-I-S-A-N-T. And or complicit. Which of these words describes you? Are you part of the problem? Or are you part of the solution? <clears throat> Countless people will hate the New World Order and will die protesting against it. This from H.G. Wells in the New World Order, 1939. Remember, he was a charter member of the Fabian Society, 1884. He wrote The Invisible Man in 1897. Now that word gregarious comes from the Latin word also gregarious, which means belonging to the herd. We can liken that to this word community, which is bandied about quite a bit today. Now you've heard me say, I don't know anybody named community. I don't know anybody named we, us, they, them. The government, the state of Texas. I don't even know anybody named We the People. And this gets it to the heart of the essential elements of honorable contract. Are you part of the problem or part of the solution? I saw a short video the other day on YouTube entitled The Chain of Obedience. The Chain of Obedience. So how is it that I can call the pillars of our communities communitarians? How is it that I can equate communitarianism to every flavor of socialism that you rather like but it's also those flavors of socialism that you most assuredly cannot like who are these people who are our enemies What is our enemy? When you look into this word communitarianism, you see that very likely it may indeed be yourself. Mark, I got to do it, man. Got to give you the two minute warning uh, and remind you that uh, folks who are intrigued by your discussion are going to want to know where they can find more. So don't forget that momentary blatant self-promotion well thanks so much Gary I want to remind you also of that word engrenage e-n-g-r-e-n-a-g-e -E, which means gearing the sequencing of inescapable the inev inevitability of events think of a Swiss timepiece what is your role? Have you been compartmentalized? Mario Savio said this in the 60s. There is a time when the operation of the machine becomes so odious, makes you so sick at heart, that you can't take part. You can't even passively take part. And you've got to put your bodies upon the gears and upon the wheels, upon the levers, upon all the apparatus and you've got to make it stop. And you've got to indicate to the people who run it, to the people who own it, that unless you're free, 
the machine will be prevented from working at all. Thank you for listening. This is Larkin, Texas signing out. LarkinTexas.blogspot.com Mark, I want to thank you so much for your participation in the United We Strike Marathon and uh, wish you a very Merry Christmas. Hope you enjoy the holiday season. Uh, I know we're going to do the best we can around here, although I think this year we're going to strive not to give commercial gifts. We have decided uh, in our family that we're going to gather together and have a blatantly ostentatious feast and enjoy each other's company. But as far as the uh, commercialization, uh, we're going to actively try to avoid that this year. Well, that's well and good. That sounds just wonderful. Do you think I should clean up my fireplace, my chimney, Gary? Well, I would, just in case. I mean, you just never know. I mean, you know, I, I know a lot of people out there don't believe in that guy in the red suit, but why take chances? I think I need to put that back on my honeydew list. What do you think? I know I'm going to clean mine. <laughs> Mark in Texas. Merry Christmas to you. You have a good one, sir, and thank you again for your participation. And I'm going to take us out with a little uh, Addicted to Love by Robert Palmer. That's a, that's a cute tune. This is United We Strike Radio on the International Community Radio Network. Don't buy, don't comply, ask why. UnitedWeStrike.com Radio.